Hi, in a video some time back you saw me do a teardown of this Fleur TG165 thermal imaging camera, one of these uh, cheaper gun type uh, cameras and I kind of sort of destroyed it getting it apart because well I didn't know how to take it apart properly and it was destroyed in the process but all of the guts still worked out of it like the uh, you know the lepton sensor and the LCD and the board and everything else and it, it it was pretty much gone so I thought well what can I do with the guts out of it? I've got to do something cool I know how about the world's first thermal camera watch yeah let's check it out beauty and here it is check it out and that's Dave too there show us your moves Dave yeah show us some John Travolta Saturday Night Fever, come on. No, nah, no, he's, he's, I think he's too young for that. He's got no idea, but there you go. That's the world's first thermal imaging watch. Awesome. So here it is. Uses all the guts out of the Fleur TG165 and including the uh, lepton sensor there in the front. P please excuse the crudity of this uh, 3D printed uh, model here. It's not actually uh, stuck together because I'm going to show you the insides in a minute so it would look better. This is our first shot at printing a 3D case for it. We got it first go and we'll show you some of that in a minute. But uh, yeah, it uses the existing board. There's our for, uh, charging the thing. Um, SD, micro SD uh, card there for uh, storing photos on. Uses the original uh, keypad here to turn off and on. We don't have any silk screen on there yet and the uh, lepton sensor in the front and there you go in a 3d printed case and the world's first thermal imaging camera watch awesome so as you can see we've got the lepton uh, sensor sitting in there it doesn't have the original uh, germanium uh, lens from the thing but it seems to work you know reasonably well without it it's got the uh, shutter on top this uh, lepton sensor is it comes with an optional uh, shutter and you might see that click there maybe it might uh, try and compensate itself every now and then little micro shutter comes across in there it might have <laughs> fallen off actually it's a bit how you do it at the moment this whole thing but uh, it it's definitely a proof of concept so let's take a squeeze inside this thing and I'll show you what we've done here there you go we bodged in a uh, little flat lithium battery there it's going to get decent life but uh, we haven't measured the uh, power consumption um, the original one of course used an 18650 uh, battery this one isn't the same capacity as an 18650 but you know it's going to get like half an hour of use or maybe maybe even an hour or something like that I don't know we've got our lepton sensor down the bottom in there which fits on that part of the case the watch uh, strap is just a um you can see at the moment we just bodged in a uh, earbud um thing what are they called a q-tip or something right whatever you call them in your country so we just put those in there stuck it in you know because we need to 3d print a separate thing to hold that watch band in so there's our 600 milliamp hour battery it's like 20c it's a real high discharge one you know designed for little uh, model aircraft and uh, things like that but we're only using it at a much um, lower discharge level than that and if we whip that off there you can see that we've actually removed the original uh, original board connector here, which went off to the 18650 battery, that just used a two-pin um, header, but uh, that was like too high. So we just uh, decided to get extra low profile, disconnect that solder wise directly in. Now this original um, button here for the uh, photo uh, button, it was uh, straight on the board like that, so you press from the top, but of course we couldn't press from the top we didn't want that so we just bodged in a new one in here and made it right angle like that so we can uh, and just have it sticking out side the case so that we can just press that and save images to our uh, micro SD card over here but apart from that it's basically um, exactly the same board uh, we didn't really have to cut anything off here we designed the case to like fit and then hold it in here like this you'll th see the 3d model uh, shortly but that was designed to just hold that existing board in place like that and then if we lift the whole board out here it was designed to be press fit there we go we can see that the LCD is still attached to uh, the base of it as it originally uh, was that's actually uh, uh, taped 
down to the board like that. We've got our original tactile dome switches on here. And this originally had this rubber membrane um, a keypad on top to actually press those buttons, but that was too thick and it had protruded from the case and it would look ugly. So what we did is just 3D print some buttons that just went, look, they just went straight through the case like that. We've got four little buttons in there, so that's really quite neat. They do work. It's not the best solution. Maybe the uh, little uh, plungers could have been uh, longer on them, but uh, yeah, yeah, they do work. And uh, we got all this on the first go, on the first print. So there you go. This piece on top here, as you'll see in the 3D model in a minute, is a separate one, and that's just uh, taped down at the moment. We didn't want to uh, glue that, so it's just a separate piece that was printed and then taped down to the top. And of course we could have printed this all as like one big part, but then we wanted like a nice, um, you know, shiny surface on here. There's there's multiple ways to do this. No, we haven't uh, acetone finished this or anything. It, it is uh, printed with ABS uh, plastic, this particular one. We didn't use the PLA material print on the MakerBot uh, replicator, which you'll uh, see in a minute. I've got some footage of uh, making that but yeah uh, so we just printed that as a second part and then just uh, stuck that on but yeah otherwise it, uh, you can see that this flat surface we actually printed that face down like that so it got a nice uh, uh, surface and uh, the buttons and everything were you know it, it just made more sense to actually design it and print it that way than just a you know one part with this big protruding thing and all that uh, that would have been uh, a little bit messy to print now as far as the lepton sensor board goes this one's actually taped in there so i have to be very careful taking that out in fact i i might not be able to get that out but you'll notice that this board has been chopped right along here it originally was you know a fair bit uh, longer than this and it would have been like too high but thankfully the layout um person who designed this board sort of just kept all the traces as you would um kept kept the traces short he didn't like extend them right out here like this so we could actually just shear that off we just missed a via or a, a trace down in there just shear it off and then not have to uh repair any of the traces although if a trace did go out there we could have uh we could have repaired it put in a little uh mod wire to do that but we didn't have to so the board was physically longer in the other one just because of you know how like mounting purposes and things like that in the TG165 uh, case so we just chopped that off and got a minimum height in there of course it has to be um, in the correct uh, orientation as well to use the thing on the wrist and then you know show up so there's only one orientation it can go in now this nice case that you see here um i lack the uh, 3d cad skills to do this so this was done by dave too who's quite um good at 3d modeling in solidworks this was like i i originally um just did a prototype to try and fit this so this is one that i uh, designed and printed out before uh, dave come along and that's why this video has taken too long and i was originally going to have like the buttons in there and things like that and yeah anyway that was just a uh, first shot at it to fit things in not nearly as nice um as this nicely molded and uh 3d modeled package and yes it was all done in uh, scale and modeled in uh, SolidWorks and he Dave even modeled the uh, PCBs and the screens and the buttons and where they were going to go and everything so he knew it was going to fit in here before we actually printed it and sure enough it fitted like a glove oh well kind of like an OJ Simpson glove but yeah it worked first go so yeah that was just one of my first quick and dirty uh, 3D drafts for this thing but um, well you know an original concept just to uh, get stuff and size things up and I did this in eMachine shop software but the reason I um, didn't um, finish it off properly is because I found a bug when I tried to e uh, export uh, from eMachine shop into uh, the 3D MakerBot um, software and like things were vanishing you know like extrusions were just vanishing and all over the place and it was really ah uh, it was just a pain in the ass anyway so Dave did it all in uh, SolidWorks but during the assembly of this thing while we had no real issues with the 3D case we did have with this pain in the ass flat flex cable which connects over to the lepton sensor now yeah I can barely see it on the screen here but if you've got a sharp eye 
you can see, in fact I'll get something a bit sharper, you can see in there, there's little tiny breaks in that trace there and this is a quite a common fault with these flat flexors it, this is obviously the pinch line where it exited from the uh, board um, mount connector and then you know if you flex it too many times then you can get little micro breaks in your traces like that we had that and we had all sorts of intermittent operation wondering what the problem was and you look at it under reasonable magnification you know just ordinary magnification like one of those you know head mounted ones or something like that low power ones well you can't really see the break but you know you put it under decent magnification and you can see these tiny little breaks in there when you get the flex and you know and if you straighten it out like that it might make contact anyway and very if you're very careful use very low temperature you can actually put solder back on there and join any breaks if you're really desperate um, and uh, but as you can see I almost did that almost success but I had one last little dab at it and wah, it burnt straight through oh what a pain in the ass but just a little tip with these flat flex cables if you do get one that breaks you can just cut it with a pair of scissors like that, assuming you've got the length left, we just had enough length left to uh, cut it across with a pair of scissors and all this white stuff, you can actually get in there, if you're very careful, apply the right amount of pressure and just scrape that off and get in there and actually get yourself a new flat flex end which you can put into the connector and this is the actual end of the one that we're actually using on the lepton sensor there and it works just fine we didn't have to buy a new cable because we couldn't actually get one um, in stock of the right um, type that we uh, wanted so we just yeah just scrape away and yep Bob's your uncle you can fix these no problem at all and there's a close-up of that lepton uh, PCB which we just uh, cut off there and uh, that worked a treat so here's an animated 3D render Dave exported uh, directly from SolidWorks. He can do this kind of thing. And you'll see how he actually uh, modeled all of the PCB. These are exact dimensions too. He got the calipers, measured it all up and everything. The battery and the buttons and everything else and the lepton sensor. He's got all models for these and put that in. And you see all the buttons and the exploded view and all the separate parts that we printed there. Um, there's not that many of them. But as you can see, it, this is how we ensured that it would all fit together when we actually 3D print it, and sure enough, it did. No worries at all. And here's a short uh, time lapse. We can't show the whole thing of the build. It took like three and a half hours or four hours or something, but we sort of uh, printed them all out at once. You can see all the different uh, sections plus the buttons in the uh, back corner there as well, and you can see it, uh, it built up some of the uh, support material there. We did have a bit of an issue down in the bottom uh, right uh, corner there with one of the holders, but generally it worked pretty well. And here is our final print. Check it out. We've got the uh, the main base of the unit. It's um, upside down, uh, by the way. And we've got our top cover and our little buttons here. Decided to print them all out. Um, had a little issue down here with one of the uh, the hold holder for the lepton um, sensor there. But uh, anyway, that was uh, really impressive. I was in very impressed how it built the bridge right across there. That was uh, just fantastic. So now we'll uh, peel these suckers off that was a heated bed by the way we're using um a 110 degree bed with uh 230 degree um head on that and it's all done with abs plastic so there we go hey. Ta -da! look at that and of course we printed it with the um raft on the bottom so it's not that great so we'll probably have to well we definitely have to reprint this but uh because this is going to be the top surface under here um, it'd be better to try and either print that directly on there or um, print it up the other way so that, uh, yeah, we get a nice smooth finish on the outside. But uh, anyway, that's our front cover plate. And there it is. So, it yeah, it bridged all the way across there. It decided only to build those two supports in there. That's very impressive. And, uh, oh, by the way, if you're wondering, yes, I have had countless problems with my MakerBot, but uh, uh, I've got these new uh, red aftermarket metal uh, support um, things in here, and they have made it like really ultra stable, and I've got a new uh, spring-loaded thing that's made all the difference is a new um, spring-loaded um, uh, extruder 
plunger holdery thing that uh, goes against the filament instead of the stupid plastic thing that went across there and that stopped all uh, blockages and things from happening in there so that was a really there were two really good upgrades that uh, actually make this MakerBot uh, quite usable these days and let's look at that these uh, rafts actually peel off quite nicely look at that so that's our support material under there and you can still see the uh, the pattern of the first layer that went down uh, to bridge this huge gap in there but look at that there's the uh, slot for the SD card and the uh, USB connector that turned out really really nice as I said the rafts do separate quite nicely or oh, print it directly on the surface and then we get a nice smooth uh, surface finish on the front and there we go there's the first shot at that it is a uh, custom design for my wrist could have done with a bit more angling on the side there but hey that's that's pretty groovy and the reason why this board didn't fix is because we accidentally printed out version one so oops um yeah version two actually yeah there wasn't uh didn't cater for the uh, roundness um, the rounding on the inside there for the board but uh yeah we just <laughs> printed the wrong file Oh. So there you have it. There's the world's first thermal camera watch. We just did this for a bit of fun. Hope you liked it. And if you did, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube because that helps a lot. A big thermal thumbs up. And if you want to discuss it, jump on over to the EV blog forum. Catch you next time. And no, I didn't end up putting the laser, the triple laser on here for the Predator thing. That would have been cool, but you know, going a bit far.